The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks. We'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And checking out where things at right now, we got the S&P is currently up three points. The Russell's up one and a half, and NASDAQ's up 3.75. Dow is currently up around 60 points on the day right now. We'll get on over at Copper. Copper, uh, pretty flat right now, uh, not a, up a quarter percent. Uh, the other two metals are slightly down. We have gold down a couple points, just been pretty choppy in the gold market there. And we got silver is uh, down about 0.2%, uh, so not a big move. Oil down uh, nearly pushing 1%, down 64 cents on the day. We got natural gas is up over 2%. We got corn up uh, just a couple bucks, but uh, look for a big move come on corn on Monday when those ag reports come out, along with soybeans. Soybeans up pretty nice right now, up 16.75 points on a 1.7% expected move. We got the pound dollar is down... Uh, 132 pips. So uh, massive move there on the pound dollar. Uh, we're releasing their interest rate statement and everything last night. We got the euro pound up 15. Dollar franc is up 65 pips with the dollar yen up 22 and the euro yen down at 76. Aussie yen is currently up 7 pips on the day. The Aussie dollar is currently down 28 pips. Uh, looking on over at euro dollar, it is down 93. Again, they had their press conference and uh, not doing themselves any good, just making it weaker, pump, pump, pump away. Uh, dollar strength adding to that, dollar up half percent, pushing that euro dollar further down. Bond showing a little bit of weakness in the middle of the, <laughs> pardon me, the indice strength. Not an abnormal thing to see. Uh, that gets you caught up right now on your daily lunchtime market wrap. Uh, where the markets are at. Let's do uh, just some quick overviews of some charts real quick. Pull this up. Go into it. Uh, Aussie dollar decided around midnight to kick it in gear. Picked on up and then headed on back south. Uh, right around 7 o'clock this morning, started flatlining and then um, gave us a confirmation right there at around 8.30 uh, to go ahead and go shorten it. Moved on down. They're on the 10-minute uh, MVP momentum volatility predictor. Looking on over at the Euro Yen. Uh, Euro Yen going long, then coming short. They're coming back up. but just trying to etch back on up long um, there from last night's movement. But uh, there's some you know nice markets uh, in the evenings even. The evening time traders there. We got Euro Dollar. 7 o'clock starts punching up. Uh, hesitates for a little bit, but it gets its feet under it. And right there, after, a little bit after 11 o'clock, picks on up. Moves on up half a deviation before pulling on back, but using that as a resistance level. Pound dollar, uh, last night obviously had a lot of movement. Of course, this morning had a whole lot. But uh, if you look at it, it started off in a short downturn move, and that happened right at 3 a.m. It just kept going south all night. And um, hit one deviation before market opened and uh, popped up a little bit, and it came on back down to one and a half deviations on the day before it was all said and done. We got oil, we got oil heading south, uh, moving on down there to one deviation. Tipping right off of it and bouncing back off. The dollar index uh, going on in, uh, getting a big boost off of that Euro press conference, flying up, getting all of its activity in a matter of seconds right there, flying up one and a half deviations in less than 10 minutes. Uh, so a nice move there in the dollar index, but happening again all at one time. Go from negative 5 to 1.5. That's actually a two deviation move in 10, sec 10 minutes. Uh, we got the S&P and um, other big things happening right now. U.S. Yen reloading for the 115 handle, moving on towards that. S&P and Dow enjoying some gains. A couple others uh, missing out on the party. That's one of the things that came up there uh, with the election results and everything. Um, obviously, the dollar gaining, greenback there gaining 
Um, Asian sliding down. We got pound dollar falling, hitting fresh one-year lows on that pound dollar. So that wasn't just a down move. It was a fresh low. We got the jobless claims uh, point to a tightening market. Let's point on over. Let's check out where the U.S. jobless claims are today. And uh, those numbers came out this morning along with everything else at 830. And pull my screen up here so you can see it. And over here we got 8:30. Just a lot of stuff. Building permits coming out. ECB press conference. Unemployment claims. I mean, you name it. The list was there. Uh, but uh, unemployment claims coming at 278,000. Um, and uh, let's see here. Revision on the last number. They bumped it up by a thousand. Uh, but unemployment claims uh, did go a little bit lower than expected. Um, but uh, declining a little bit more than forecast. But nothing that was just wow. But nevertheless, uh, a drop in that is good, as long as it's real, which usually <laughs> numbers have their whole different way of uh, being calculated. Um, so a lot of the stocks went pretty flat after Dra- uh, Draghi's comments came out. Crude oil fell, and the possibility of an increased supply from Libya is supposedly the explanation of the drop in oil. Uh, let's see, United Nations, uh, United States uh, natural gas storage channels, a little bit above forecast, but our natural gas inventories come on in today and so let's look at how those numbers came on out over here on natural gas came in at 91 billion British thermal units there on an expectation of 86 that's a little bit of an increase if we go into the actual release we hop on down and it talks about you know how much came in we got 91 an increase of 91 um, British uh, units whatever how do you call that I don't know it's basically they freeze the stuff uh, and uh, from the previous week basically supply went up and that's a little less than last year at this time um, on the five-year average. It's also below the five-year average. So even though we saw an increase in supply, it's lower than we have been in previous year and in previous five years. So reading that report can help out a little bit on uh, sort of knowing what does that number really mean? Why do you sometimes see numbers go up when you think they should be going down you know, or vice versa? And uh, a lot of times that is the main reason is because uh, – Basically, there's there's more to the report than just the one number that everybody's staring at. So uh, if we pull up, let's go ahead and look at natural gas and see how did it respond to the news today. And pull that up. We'll look at it. And get that screen going. It's going to take just a second. So now we got that up. Uh, news came out. Supply went up, but price went down. Well, why did supply so? Okay, that makes sense. Supply goes up. Price goes down. But then... Price went back up. Why'd price go back up if the supply went up? Because it's below what it usually is at this time of year last year, and it's below what it usually is over the five-year average at this time of year. Even with that increase, it's below the one-year and five-year average. So a lot of traders came in and shorted it because they saw, ooh, supply up, price down. But then other traders that were paying attention go, ooh, not so quick, and they went ahead and brought it on back up. Uh, What do we have on the... Expected range movement here. How do we do on our expectancy here on the natural gas inventory report? We got uh, we did pretty good. So uh, we moved up here a little bit past 75%. We got 0.72, uh, 0.81 uh, movement there in the uh, natural gas inventory from high to low. Turned right back around. Would have been a great uh, iron butterfly, iron condor, you name it. Um, and then had a little bit of a late breakout, which is a little surprise. You don't get that breakout like that. It had a late breakout there in between 12 and 1. Um, let's see, dollar franc uh, apparently moving on up, up, up and hitting one-year highs. Let's check out the dollar franc. And let's see here. So pulling up the dollar franc. Got to give it a second. And let's just back that thing out. But we got that big pop, man, on that ECB there. That's that dollar franc, uh, the dollar really bringing that strength to the table. And it'll take it a second. Um, I wonder if I should open a separate chart since I already had some of those on there. Yeah, I think I caused myself some pain there by doing that. Um, <laughs> and that's going to all flip out. Oh, there it goes. All right, so I just wanted to back out and look at a year of data. All right, so, yeah, so definitely uh, we're making those fresh one-year highs. But really, I mean, it's just breaking that high there from October. Um, but 
you know, I have to pull it up and see whenever I see uh, reports coming out with stuff like that. We got crude apparently tumbling on down as OPEC uh, lashes its price growth. And under seventy eight dollars is uh, where the price is tumbling on down to. And I want to say I want to say it was Pesavetto. He said he saw it coming down to fifty bucks. So, um, it you know that that seems so outlandish. But uh, you know we were watching it go south and it's breaking, breaking, breaking below. And uh, he may not. I mean, he's about halfway there from you know, when it was up there near a hundred. But uh, he was talking about when it was back up here and saying, hey, if it goes below, you know. Eighty dollars better watch out. We've just been watching all this volatility happen and is up there at ninety, ninety four, ninety five. So right there about ninety four, ninety five, like calling it saying, Hey, look for this thing to head on south and he's he called it right on the money. And it's going on down. We're already hit down to a low of you know, actually a little lower than they thought, we're learning seventy six dollars. Um gold knocking out a lot of its gains. Let's see, let's back on out here, let's zoom back in, pull up a gold chart. And talk about the gains on that, but it's been uh, giving it a lot of – had a little bit of nice volatility last night to sort of pop it up and down, but today has been really just absent and quiet. Um, so we had that big move right there, and then we had this big pop over here. And, but beyond that, it's been really just quiet. So down at 1142, just really gold just getting hammered with everything that's happening. Uh, let's check out the uh, – we had a Aussie dollar trade we were looking at for last uh, evening. So let me get that one going. Pull it up. And I want to say this one was on the Aussie dollar. Retail uh, or employment change. Was that employment change? Yeah, employment change report. I am looking for a 7 to 9. Usually not a big uh, mover. And let's see here. So we go measure out our range. We were expecting it to be what we had uh, less than 30 pips for our report on this. And so if we go track this on over, starting at 7 o'clock, and I guess we could enter as early as 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock, and then taking the trade to 10 o'clock, net of two pips. So you would have really got a max profit on that trade, or right near max profit on that Aussie dollar news trade. Uh, we also had a couple other trades we were looking at. We were looking at the pound of manufacturing production report, 11 to 7. Well, it was a caution on that one just due to the fact that the pound has their interest rate coming out the next morning. But um, let's see, overall, let's see here, 11 to 7. Like I said, you got to use a lot of caution when you got that report coming out. But it sort of ran up and then came on back for us. Uh, so between 11 and 7, how did we fare? So right here at 11, taking that over to 7, we actually did really well. Um, only two pips the big movement happening there after 7 o'clock. So uh, pretty much max profit on that trade as well. All right, there, there. We'll be back right after this break. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting T. FNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days, and will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So as I said, the pound manufacturing trade worked out rather well last night. Uh, looking on over, I mean, I got some trades on here from this morning. I was analyzing, going through. Uh, but looking on over here, checking out the, we also had another pound dollar uh, trade. Uh, usually their rate statement's a very uh, small impact event, uh, usually because everybody's waiting on the euro dollar press conference to come out. So we take that six to eight, and as you see, we get 12 ticks. We're looking for... 35 on that. It was very profitable. Uh, we did a very similar trade over on the euro minimum bid rate. It comes out 745. Well, let me open that euro dollar chart for you. And uh, we'll look at that one. And then we do a straddle of uh, the other time. So we'll look at that as well. And going over here looking at the 6 to 8 o'clock. As you can see, like little to no movement. Profitable iron condor. And then we say, hey, Get ready for a press conference coming out and get in at 8 a.m. Um, and we're looking for $45 ideally. We go in here 8 o'clock on a straddle and we shot down 125 pips, more than enough money. And uh, we're still going. We're still down actually a little bit further actually than that right now. But uh, more than enough to cover the cost. 45 bucks, you got to cover that. 45 plus you got to cover half that basically. So let's say. 
you know, twenty two dollars to cover fifty five, sixty five, you know, um, you know, about sixty seven, you know, dollars on the trade to be one to one below where you entered twenty ticks down. So let's say if you enter twenty ticks down, and basically had to cover seventy ticks, and you need about a ninety tick move to get a one to one take profit on this. Well, we moved one hundred twenty five pips. That was more than enough to get that one to one take profit. So the trade worked out really, really well. Uh, and uh, moved our expectations, which was greater than 90 pips of uh, movement uh, when that release came out. And, um, I mean, you could have done it on shorter-term ones as well. I mean, you see it exploded. I usually like to get the 3 o'clock to have the time just to how the press conference works. Uh, but, you know, uh, long-term, short-term, either one that you picked, uh, the movement happened quickly. And let's see here. Okay, so that wraps up our news plan for that right there. Other thing, we had the preliminary non-farm um, productivity case come out. Not a big deal. Unemployment claims came out. We already went over that. Uh, looking at the CAD, IVP and Maya came out. Uh, had a little bit of an impact, but not really a massive uh, mover on the dollar CAD, usually in and of itself. Let's take a look at that one real quick. But like I said, usually not a big one. Pound nicer had their uh, GDP estimate come out late in the morning. Usually not a big mover on. The GDP, but uh, let me see here. 10 o'clock, uh, CAT IVP and my, we did get a little little pop right there. It's about 40 pips. It's a little bigger than normal. It popped down and ran right up. So um, good to be aware of those events when they're coming. Weekly natural gas, we uh, went over that report. We already showed uh, the movement, basically right near the expectation of movement. Um, popped on down on a um, higher supply, but it was lower for the overall, and the market went on back up. FOMC member uh, is speaking tonight at 7.05. Not a major speech, but nevertheless, good to know that's coming out. RBA monetary policy report coming out, so be aware you Aussie dollar shares tonight um, if there's any surprises leaked in that. We'll also have the Frank retail sales numbers being released at 3.15. This gives us another iron condor setup going into Friday. We'll be looking for an 11 p.m. entry with a 7 a.m. expiration. Um, so going into 11 tonight for 7 a.m. tomorrow. And for about a $25 uh, expected move in that uh, time period. So really not a massive expected move during that time. Things uh, Don't be surprised. Things are going pretty quiet tonight, actually, uh, with NFP and all that stuff coming up tomorrow. Uh, going on and looking at the pound trade balance report. That's coming out at 4.30. Also a pretty neutral uh, move there. Entering at 11 p.m. for a 7 a.m. expiration on the pound dollar. And uh, so we'll be looking for about a $30 Minimum profit between the maximum combined profits of the lower spread that we buy and the upper spread that we sell over on the Nadex platform. Uh, beyond that, there will be a few uh, French reports. Should not be anything of major consequence. Um, some Frank foreign currency reserves. Again, unless some big surprise, nothing there. The big news is of course, going to be the CAD and U.S. employment rates being released. At the same time, that's going to give the cat a nice boost, usually, when you get both of those, so be aware of that. Uh, what I'm looking at is getting in on these trades. Uh, most of the movement usually happens in the first 15 minutes. Okay, so I went over this yesterday, so I want to really drill this one down for you. Uh, so we're looking at iron condors, okay, minimum profit we've had over the last 12 months. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll walk through this a little bit slower for you, focusing on this NFP report when we get back on movement to expect whether or not you're using Nadex, things you need to be aware of. Stay right there. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And... We're going through and checking out uh, several things here uh, on what's going on and basically just putting together our plans by talking about the NFP report uh, that is coming on up. So let's see here. What do we got? Uh, sorry, one more second here. Just trying to open this up and get it going. All right, so with the NFP report, uh, what we're looking at for tomorrow, most of the movement that happens usually happens in the first 15 minutes. Uh, it can be a little crazy. Sometimes you'll get some crazy bounces going on. Um, you know, go for as much time as you can get because usually it's just you're going to get more premium. That's why. Okay? And it usually doesn't just keep going, 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 going. Um, so you may go for 3 p.m. But if you're going in, you're doing like iron condors. Obviously, there's a benefit to less time. Um, you just want to be able to pop and drop back. And um, spreads are going to be a little bit wider if you choose like a 7 a.m. to a 3 p.m. Okay? 
So what I mean by is the width of the spread from the floor to the ceiling, so a little bit more risk involved in that, not the bend the ask. Uh, or you may decide to enter at 8 a.m. for a 10 a.m. to get a narrower spread uh, to take advantage of the increased implied volatility but with a lot tighter max uh, loss on the trade. So you can look at both possibilities. Now, also, you need to be looking at this premium. If this premium is cheap enough, you might be able to go in and pull off a straddle. Okay? Sometimes the IV is really high. It makes it ridiculous to do a straddle. Everybody thinks the straddle is the perfect trade, not the best idea. Okay? A lot of times, iron condors are better trades. But every once in a while, straddles are better, and you'll notice very few times do I recommend straddles whenever I put up our news plan. So what do we got tomorrow? Well, Aussie dollar, we're looking at about 60 pips of movement. You're a dollar, 100 plus. Pound dollar, 100 plus. Uh, dollar franc, about a little over 90 pips. Dollar yen, over 80. And dollar CAD, 75. And with the unemployment rate in there, sometimes we'll get a little bit more than that. Okay, so we're talking about euro dollar, pound dollar, about 100. Dollar franc, 90. Dollar yen, 80. Dollar CAD, 75. Aussie dollar, 60 pips in movement. All right? So if you can get one where you could pull off a straddle and be one-to-one -one if it actually moved, 100 pips. By the time you got in and got out of the trade, awesome. Then go for it. If uh, it looks like that's just not going to work, which a lot of times it won't because the implied volatility will be so high, then pull off a iron condor. Uh, you're going to want to get on the Aussie dollar at least 50 pips. Um, on the euro dollar, going to want about 60. On the pound dollar, 70 pips. Dollar CAD, 60 pips. Dollar franc, 60. And dollar yen, 60 pips of minimum, minimum profit. That's really what I'm going to be shooting for when I'm looking for any one of those trades. Again, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You could even look at... It's early as 7 a.m. for 3 p.m. Um, and, again, you may be able to straddle these. Now, the most advanced straddles, uh, you can do straddles, by the way, for a 9 o'clock expiration, a 10 o'clock, and a 3 o'clock. You can be looking at all of those because, again, a lot of that movement happens right there at the top as soon as that report comes out. And just make sure as soon as you put them on, you put your take profits on. Don't be greedy because they can pop and drop really quick. That's the reason for the iron condors. Uh, our advanced straddles, the uh, biggest moving pairs, uh, mainly because we have the CAD happening at the same time, and then, of course, dollars moving, you know, the euro dollars moving the pound, and CAD's getting moved. Euro CAD, euro, and pound CAD, they'll move 100 to 150 pips, usually during the NFP. That's um, so what I've seen historically. So 90% uh, of the time, that the biggest part of that moves in the first 15 minutes. But you go, but you don't have euro CAD. You don't have pound CAD on Nadex. You don't have a natural euro CAD or a natural pound CAD, like they have a natural euro pound, okay? Meaning you can buy euro pound, sell euro pound. But you can make a synthetic. And now this is more advanced, you know, something to definitely demo trade. It's a good demo trading opportunity for you. But uh, it's where you actually do a synthetic FX straddle, which actually involves four contracts. You're going to buy the euro dollar and you're going to buy the dollar CAD. Euro dollar times dollar CAD equals euro CAD. So it's like A over B times B over C equals A over C. It takes you way back to basic algebra in high school. Okay, A over B times B over C equals A over C. Euro over dollar times dollar over CAD equals Euro CAD. So if you buy the Euro dollar and you buy the dollar CAD, the upper spreads, and then you sell the Euro dollar and sell the dollar CAD at lower spreads, you put on a synthetic FX pair straddle. Okay. And then you need to be looking at a Euro CAD chart for movement. All right. And then you could also looking at your floating PL on movement. So look at for that 100, 100 pip move. How do I know if it's moved to 100 pips? Look at a Euro CAD chart. Okay. And then also, of course, be paying attention to PL so you can close out the winning side. You don't need to close out the losing side because it's near max loss. It may pop back down and be profitable on that side. Um, Again, 90 cents on that big moves in the first 15 minutes. Now, the pound cad, you'd buy pound dollar. You'd buy, uh, let's see, uh, well, dollar cad. <laughs> buy pound dollar, buy dollar cad, uh, upper spreads. And you'd sell pound dollar and sell dollar cad at lower spreads to put on a synthetic 4X straddle. And again, then watch a pound CAD chart. Look for that 100 pip plus move. Close out your winning sides, and then it may pop back. You might be able to get out at break even, which would put more money in your pocket because it's money now you didn't take a loss because remember, straddle, if it moves up, your upper spreads are winning. If it moves down, your lower spreads are winning. So if it moves up and your upper spreads win, but your lower spreads have lost, but you're still profitable, but then it comes back down. If you get out at break even, you've made, now you've brought back some of that loss that you expected. 
and I'm on one side, which, again, the profit's greater on one side than the other, so it's okay, but if you can get more back, why not? Or you might even be able to trail it as a little bit more advanced trading to uh, maybe even squeeze some profit out of both sides of the trades if we get a big enough uh, bounce in the market. So that really is the the NFP report. There's a lot of trade op- opportunities. It's one of those things you don't hop on at 8.15 and try to figure it out, Okay. You're probably up at 7 o'clock, and you're looking at every opportunity over the next hour to, you know, put trades on, scaling in, looking at different ones. And the scanner's going to make this 100 times easier seeing all the different contracts that are out there. Um, that really is the, the simple essence of how to put together all the different pieces uh, for, for the NFP report and to uh, understand the expected ranges. How does that help you if you're not an index trader? One, you can hedge understanding the expectations of movement. So if you want to go directional or whatever, but you can put a hedge on. Two, just knowing how far to expect it to move. Maybe you're looking for bounces, you know, off of the pops and things like that. If I get pops 60 pips, maybe you're going to be ready to go short, you know, and invert it like if the Aussie dollar pops up or whatever. Um, so there's, you know, just uh, – or maybe you're in the trade. You want to know where to start taking profit, tightening stops. Knowing those expected ranges can help you. And, again, that's on the NFP report specifically uh, for tomorrow afternoon. And that is how to trade that. What do we got coming up next week? We talked about this a little bit last week. Uh, we have our Aussie dollar home loans uh, getting released. Uh, we'll also have our CAD housing um, starts coming up. And let's see, I've got a pound berry supports coming on out. We'll actually give us a straddle opportunity next Tuesday. We'll get a Euro Industrial Production Report for Nyan Condor, Frank PPI. Uh, we're going to have our unemployment claims. Um, oil inventory, is that has that been bumped? Let me see here. One second. just want to check on my calendar if it got bumped or if I just mistyped it. And let's see. It may have got bumped. And um, we don't have a holiday, so it shouldn't be. And But it may be. It looks like it is. So, uh, unemployment claims, crude oil is coming out on Thursday. So, yeah, it is bumped. Uh, There's a variety of bank holidays. Oh, we do have a bank holiday. We have one on Tuesday. So, we have, uh, yeah, we have Veterans Day on Tuesday. So, since that's a bank holiday, it bumps back the oil inventory um, a day. So, oil inventory will actually be on Thursday. Natural gas will be on Thursday. Um, Let's see here. And I need to add, if I didn't, let me see if I added those on the Be Aware events. Yeah, let me add my Be Aware events on Bank Holidays. Um, one second, I'm going to put that on there so I can make sure I remind you going into it. So Bank Holidays, Be Aware, basically what uh, will happen is often you'll have lower volume, which can cause... Um, sporadic volatility okay all right but um yeah so weekly oil inventory and natural gas both coming out the same day that'll mess up a little bit of the um reports there and let's see we do have we we have that one let's see uh bank and then we got oil coming up and on thursday uh i don't actually see natural gas listed on thursday is it on friday so, yeah, natural gas got moved on over to Friday. So they bumped back. Both of the inventory reports are going to be on unscheduled days, jacking with the ranges a little bit. Okay? Uh, we have Euro, final CPI, flash GDP, and final core CPI coming out um, on Thursday evening. We're going to have CAD manufacturing cells coming out. And um, let's see, uh, several various years reports, core realty cells, retail cells, and import prices coming out on Friday. Again, natural gas coming out on Friday. Um, not our normal day on that. <clears throat> and then uh, um, it's not the annual report, but uh, we do have the um, ways to crop production report. So, again, not the annual one, but still it's a massive report. Um, let's see here. I'll make sure I put a note that's not the annual. And But uh, be very aware of that. Um, coming out at 12 to 1 if you are, uh, you know, corn, soybean, wheat, cotton, et cetera, trader. Um, so definitely uh, could provide a straddle, strangle, uh, could provide a hedging opportunity, you know, or just a get out of the way. 
So any of the above, uh, just very important, don't get hit by the bus event um, for you ag traders out there coming up on Monday. All right, that gets us a nice uh, sneak preview into what is coming up next week on our news. We got uh, the most recent news covered up and or covered. <laughs> so we did a news review. We did uh, tomorrow's news, and we gave you a preview of next week's. Uh, all right, let me go over here, and let's see what we got. I'm trying to pull up uh, another piece for you. We'll pull up. Let's go through the day trading plans and see what other opportunities we might have left in the day. And just give me one second here. I'll just uh, I think I can switch this over. There we go. And just got to switch up the market. Okay, so right down here. Uh, so the S&P, uh, we avoided, of course, you got to stay away in major news. Like I talk about, don't get hit by the bus. Uh, but anyway, so we had a short, worked out really well. Um, had not reset yet. Stay out of the way of that short. The long still going. Again, just stay out of the way on that trade. So that trade would have popped against you um, unless you got in late. Maybe you got to break even out of the thing. But really just the best thing to do is avoid trying to enter directly right on news unless you're hedging or doing low-risk trades. And then it's still 50-50, but if you have a really high profit to risk ratio, it can be worth it. Um, comes on back down, goes on south, and... Comes down, hits this, probably pops up and break even out if you do the break even, which I suggest you do. Uh, I like to get out of break even whenever it's moved to, or not get out, but move my stop to break even. But it did descend on down and hit the target. It's moved on back up now, back up at the entry. Really seeming like a heavy um, price level. We have very low volume. Would not really be wanting to pile on a lot right here to go long. Um, I'd be very, very cautious using a very tight stop um, on this trade here at the end of the day. With this low volume compared to the high volume we had at these prices, we're not even touching that right now. Uh, let's see here. Going on over, and what is that? That's 1A and the notes I got on there for 1A. Uh, let's see. Even health support, that's 40,005. Headed straight for resistance at 2017.19. Um, All time high up there at 2022. Failed to beat this area. Sees formation of significant negative double top pattern, okay, which is a drop on down um so we have some you know pretty severe overbought conditions potentially negative indicators there's a good chance uh we could break higher uh perhaps as soon as today uh we're gonna have to see a close really above 2022 again we need a close on the market above 2022 this week to continue a higher bull trend and eliminate the negative double top uh, pattern that's currently in progress um obviously a break above 2024 you know is positive um, and be ready for that to go up to 2028 or even as high as 2033 on the trade. So we are breaking up there, but we're having just a rough time of pushing there. It's like we're getting up to about 2027 is what we got to last time. So it's a pretty tough one to trade. Russell uh, just sort of sitting around, uh, bouncing between targets right now. Not a whole lot going on right there. Uh, and... Let's see here. Yeah, so just bouncing literally between targets, not getting anything fired off. We did have a long trade that fired off in the evening there and uh, as early as 1 a.m., actually a couple times, but right there. It broke the high technically. It moved on up. It did actually hit you know, the target, so moved up there. But uh, as far as today, unless you're getting in like the last night, not much happening on the Russell at the moment. All right, stay there. We'll be back right after this break.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy. A set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we're back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So we're just going through the day trading plan, stepping through these, and uh, walk through the S&P. And Russell, so far, we got oil hopping on down, barely touched, like right there within like a couple ticks. We're able to hop in the trade a little bit early if it's dropping down to our entry price, get in the trade, take a quick profit, comes back down, hits it again. That one was rough. It came within two ticks of the stop loss, but did not get stopped out, and then popped on back up, and we were able to be profitable on the trade. 
And then an aggressive entry ran on up and was also profitable as well. That's hopping back in without waiting for it to reset. But uh, really nothing uh, outstanding at the moment. Like I said, just trying to see if there's anything left on the board. Uh, gold technically closed on the pit right now for the day. Uh, it's just been flat to nothing on gold for the day. Uh, going on over, that really wraps up our commodities and our indices. Let's check out where we're at on our FX pairs. Like I said, we've had a lot of FX volatility, especially with this morning's um, news. So i got to be real careful on that 830 uh, pop right there. But um, Aussie dollar sort of stayed pretty range-bound for us. We actually just hit on the Aussie dollar. Uh, long entry there. And so going right in. Um, and uh, so obviously, what do you do if there's a long and a short? Well, obviously, you stay in the long until... It stopped out. Then if it pulls back up to the short, you can get on in on that trade. Uh, but so we're long at the moment because you can't be both. Now, this also is an opportunity where you could look for a straddle or strangle if you're a Nadex trader. So, uh, but that would be uh, one possibility. You can also, of course, check over, look at the notes on everything and see where everything lines up. So let's see. What do we got on our notes here? We got over at 1A, so we got that. Uh, Aussie dollar oversold short term, looking for a consolidation. Um, support down there at 85.65, looking for a bounce up to 86.10. As far as our strong resistance, 86.40 for potential another selling opportunity a little bit higher up there, uh, way up at 86.40. And then going on over to 4A, if it does break below the 85.65, keeps the market under pressure in the two month bear trend there and could get us. Uh, a little bit uh, further movement. But right now, stay in it, hits it, hits the stop, bounces back up. We can hop in. We can grab that one. Um, but uh, so far, so good. Looking good on the long trade. And let's see. That's really all we got so far on the Aussie for today. Just got in, and we're targeting 85 at 90. Okay, so just got in long and targeting 85 at 90. Um, Going over here, let me go ahead and look at the pound dollar. Over here on the pound, uh, let's see. So we're going in right here. We had a short that went ahead and went short. That was still going. Hadn't got stopped out. Yeah, it did well. Another short entered, and that one, crazy. Like, again, I'd be holding through that news announcement, which I don't think was wise, but it worked out. It was profitable. Uh, came on down, popped along there. That one actually had a small loss on it. We had another short. And that one is still in progress uh, going right now. So it came down. It actually hit the 50% mark, came back up to break even. So it's technically that one would be out at break even on that trade. So the trade uh, we were watching a little bit earlier. And it's break even and done um, on that one. So a couple, you know, night nighttime trade and then a nice, um, you know, morning trade. And then just kind of, you know, break even afternoon trade on there for us uh, out of all the combinations there on the pound dollar. Um And then going on into the, let's look at this here, the dollar yen. Uh, it's like we're wrapping up for the day. But uh, dollar yen has some stellar moves. And uh, right now, so far, we just keep shopping, though, on our entry price. Uh, break evens there. But uh, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow on here um, on the Diagnostic Trading Hour and in the morning at the Bull Bear Binary Hour. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
You're watching Tiger TV.